Hello, how are you doing? Yep, I'm back. I told you I'd be back. And you know, and because I was away for a little bit of time and didn't get an opportunity to talk to you like I normally do, let me just dive right into it. And I just want to talk, and I know you can relate to this. I want to talk about people that just don't understand that they're worn out, they're welcome. They're the kind of person you give an inch and they take 85 miles. They're annoying. And, <laughs> and they're just... They, it's amazing how these people really have no idea how annoying they are. They don't pick up on signals. You have to realize something. When somebody opens the door and they have a smile on their face and then they see the person and the smile melts off their face, you have to realize either you came at a bad time or they don't want you there. Now, it could be, if it happens once, you could you could have just come at a bad time. Maybe they wanted to relax. Maybe they have a significant other coming over or already there. And you're just kind of getting in the way. But if it happens every single time you go over there, you have to realize they don't want you there. Or at the very least, they want a break from you. And I had a friend of mine complaining to me about someone who was kind of torturing him with with their presence, right? It was a relative of his, and she always came over to complain about her husband, right? He made the mistake of letting her vent to him once and thought that was going to be a specific incident, and no, it turned into an everyday thing, every day. And they weren't even that close as relatives. But it's worse when it's someone who's not a relative, because I feel comfortable telling a relative, hey, enough of you. <laughs> <laughs> I actually had to tell somebody, a, a friend of mine I, I like very much. We're still buddies now. Like, dude, you know I love you like a brother. Enough of you, okay? I need, I, I need some, when I'm in the house, I need to chill. I don't want to hear about your wife every day. You're married to her, I'm not. You can call and vent if you want to, but not every day. And he started to laugh and realize what he had done. And he goes, oh, man, I didn't realize I was doing that. And he was cool. It was cool. We were friends. No problem. No one will ever say that to me because I don't really get in anybody. I don't show up at anybody's house. I don't spend too much time on the phone. I'm never one of the people. I'm not one of the people that you have to get rid of me because I'll do that way before you want me to. But what I'm speaking about now is somebody, when I lived in Los Angeles, he was in the apartment right next to me. We weren't buddies or friends or anything like that. We were, hey, how's it going? You know, the kind of conversation you have, the length of time it takes to open the lock of your door and walk into the house, <laughs> right? Or if you're, if you're having trouble opening up the mailbox of the apartment, you kind of break in the conversation. But even then, the conversation was maybe a commercial break in a sitcom at the most, about two or three, about three minutes, okay? But one time he needed some sugar. And he comes knocking on the door and I wasn't expecting anybody. And I open the door and this guy is standing there and I'm going, I didn't say it. I just kind of looked at him like, what the heck is this? You know, I was thinking maybe there's some kind of tenant meeting or something like that that I wasn't aware of. No problem. And he goes, I hate to bother you, man, but uh, can I borrow some sugar? And I didn't think that was a big of a deal. He had the cup in his hand. I said, okay. And I didn't even invite him in. I said, wait right here. Because I didn't want, because I did not want to get into a conversation. I didn't want to get into a conversation. There was too much stuff around my apartment that were conversation starters, and I did not want <laughs> the conversation to start. So I go in the back, I get him some sugar, I hand him the sugar, and I say, all right, man, I got to take care of some business. Okay, thanks a lot, man. And he goes back to his place. Not a big deal. I didn't think much of it. In fact, just like when you get cut off by somebody in, in traffic and they don't hit your car, you're a little annoyed for a moment, but about 35, 40 seconds, maybe a minute later, you almost forget about it. I almost forgot about it. I almost forgot about it so much that when he came back a day and a half later with that cup again, I had forgotten that he had come to get sugar before. I literally forgot. I was very busy. So I'm like, oh, I guess this guy wants sugar. I didn't think anything about it. This time I was a little busy. I was on the phone. So I did something that was completely uncharacteristic. I already told you I didn't invite him in because I didn't want any conversations to start. But this time I was in the middle of a phone conversation that was important. I waved him in. I pointed to the kitchen. He He's walking around the kitchen not knowing what I'm, where, where, I, where I want him to go. I point up, make, make the pointing up sign. He opens up the cabinet. And that was the biggest mistake. That was a huge mistake. 
I didn't want him to come into the apartment because I didn't want him to, st- to start a conversation. But what I had started was a mooch fest. A mooch fest. And I'll explain what I mean. I'm a busy person. And at the time, I had a hatchback car, so it was easy for me to go shopping for bulk items. And I knew a bulk item store that was near me. I walked in one time, and I was going. I wanted to buy something. I thought I, at the time, I thought it was just a regular supermarket. I didn't know it was a you know one of those bulk item type stores like you know Costco or that kind of thing. It wasn't Costco, by the way. And I walk in, I'm like, what the hell? Is, what is this? Products for giants is what I'm thinking because everything was supersized. I walked up to check the prices. I was like, I guess I'm in the wrong store. And I noticed how much. I was like, man, all that money for cornflakes? Then I did the math and I realized if I eat cornflakes over the course of a month and I buy this amount now, it seems like a lot of money up front, but it in fact isn't because I will not be buying cornflakes for another month or two. And the unit price of the cornflakes or whatever product you buy in this particular place is drastically lower than if you go in and buy it on a weekly basis or a bi-weekly basis. Hmm, I've stumbled onto something here. I walk around the store looking at all the products and I start seeing everything that I buy, I could get here, right? And if I budget correctly, I, I'll, I'll start next month because I want to put stock stockpile a little money to make sure I can make these purchases. I didn't have it at the time. So I come back 27 days later, and I go to the stuff that I want. I buy the big this, the big that, the big this, the big that, the big kappa, the baka, the baka, and I take it home. And I'm doing the math, and I'm realizing that by buying the stuff at this place, it's the equivalent of getting my phone bill for free. That's how much money I had saved by going to this place. It was as if I go to this place, I make these purchases, and the amount of money I spent on my phone bill was, was it was like maybe it was like my phone bill plus about seven bucks, something like that. Basically, just making this one decision made my phone bill free. Fantastic. So I put all the stuff in the cabinet. Yay. All the products. Yay. All the savings. Yay. One of the products was sugar. Yay. You're thinking yay, but boo. This guy walks in, he opens the cap, and he sees how much sugar I have. Now, I didn't see his reaction to the amount of sugar that I had, but I imagine it's the kind of reaction that one of those cartoon cats has when he sees a mouse with the eyes bulk out, but pug out, wiggy, 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 you know, or, or, you know, those old cartoons when the guy sees a girl he's in love with, and the heart shoots out of his chest, and his eyes go big, and his hair stands up, and waka, 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 that kind of thing. He must have thought that. When he saw all the sugar that was in there, he also started to see the other products that were in there. Ooh. Oh. Didn't think much of it. Didn't realize that I wasn't just helping out a neighbor with some sugar. I was helping out a big mooch. It was Mooch Fest, and I did not realize that. I did not realize that he would do what was about to happen, but he didn't. Man, I'm still annoyed. It got to the point where he was coming over for sugar so often that I'm starting to think, maybe, dude, you should probably go to this place that sells sugar, you know, where you can buy it with your money. And at the time, I was so averse to confrontation or calling people on that crap that I kind of just, oh, all right, and let him get away with that crap, and he just wouldn't stop. Most people would have stopped after the first time, maybe even the second time, maybe the seventh time they would have stopped. Did did they? Did you get what I just said there? How I jumped from the second to the seventh because he went seven times. I also started to notice, my friends, that some of the other stuff that was in my cabinet started to disappear. Right? Some of the products were individually wrapped so you can take out a portion of that you need and use at that particular time and all of a sudden like a little salad dressing pack was gone right you get those you get those packs of jelly that you put on your on your sandwiches to, you know you open it up you put your spoon in and you, you make your toast and jelly i started noticing some of them were missing and i hadn't opened them yet so unless somebody from the store came into my house like mission impossible and stole them back hmm 
the lady I was seeing at the time, well, she, when she came over, well, I'll put it to you this way. When she came over, she didn't eat the food. She had something else on her mind and something else on her body. And that something else on her body who was me. <laughs> we got it on. <laughs> Gave her that business so good she thought it was Christmas. <laughs> this had nothing to do with the story. I just wanted you to know I was getting some back then. <laughs> back to the food. Don't judge me. Shut up. <laughs> So one time, what I did, and I hate the fact that I was this petty. I could have just started to hand him the sugar myself. I'm like, yo, dude, I don't mind. He's like, I'm on a budget too, man. You're going to have to take care of that yourself. Nowadays, I'd have given him the first sugar. And after I gave him the sugar, I said, okay. We gotta, and I would say, I said, we're going to have to make this a one-time thing unless it's an emergency because I'm, I'm budgeted out for the month. I can't afford to be handing out sugar like that. I would tell you right up front, or I would say, can't do it. Don't have enough. I would tell you up front and it would solve that problem, but I didn't have the courage back then. I was too nice. I'm still nice, but not a sucker. So he comes in and I started to notice this. Here's the thing. There were times that he came in looking for sugar, only took a tiny bit of sugar kind of to set me up for the theft. Oh, no, you don't. Because Mr. Thomas, that's me. Bought himself some zip ties. Oh, yeah. And I rigged my cabinets to zip tie from the inside. Oh, that's right. Yeah. The only thing you could open up was the place where the sugar was. You couldn't get any place else. Oh, yeah. Now, it was a pain in the neck for me to get the zip ties back off after I did this to him. But it was worth it. It was worth it for me to go, yeah. You know where the sugar is. <laughs> evil laugh knowing what's about to happen because I know he's going to yank on the door to sneak some other stuff out and he's going to pull it with the anticipation of the door opening but it's zip tied closed from the inside because I went to the back crawled through and zip tied it from the inside for the specific purpose of setting this bunk up that's right so I'm sitting in the other room and I turn down the television and I know he's in there. I hear the door open up for the sugar. And I can hear the scoop. And he only took a little bit of sugar. I'm sitting there going, okay, you know you didn't come in for the sugar. You come in here for the theft, punk. You probably just assumed that my other friends were taking stuff. Or that I had enough people over here that were using stuff that I wouldn't notice what you took. But you were wrong, punk. I notice everything, punk. And then that joyous, joyous sound of him pulling on the door with an anticipation of the door opening only to get <laughs> yeah the door won't open <laughs> right and then he pulls it again I can hear him trying to pull it because he doesn't know it's zip tied he, he thinks it's stuck yeah it's stuck because I locked it punk and I can hear him kind of trying chicka, 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 and then the noise is getting louder and I'm going let me make him uncomfortable I hit, I tap my foot on the floor a couple of times as if I was walking in there and I can hear him readjust <laughs> everything alright back there oh uh, yeah <laughs> he walked out with his little bit of sugar which was only subterfuge to get to the rest of the stuff with his punk self and I'm standing there looking at him you ever have so you ever have somebody look at you when they know they caught you they're not going to say it out loud but they want you to know that they know and they can look at your face and realize that you now know that they know and you know that they know and they know that you know and all of that kind of crap right like when your mother set you up or your father set you up because they know you're trying to be slick and they're standing there looking at you. They're not even going to bust you this time. Just having you know that they know is enough. And they give you that look as if to say, I should, if they're into corporal punishment, whoop your behind. Or if they're not corporal punishment, take away your game. Or if they're not into that, ground you. You know that the next step is right there. And they're going to let you slide this time because just having you know that they know is enough. Well, it was one of those situations. I looked at him and let him know that I knew what he was doing. Oh, yeah. And I said, yeah, man. I'm glad you, you got the sugar that you need. He goes, yeah. I said, yeah. I said, yeah. I said, uh, I'm changing my diet, bro. Don't think I'm buying any more sugar. You understand? He goes, yeah, I understand. 
Yeah. All right, I got to start take care of some stuff. We'll see you later, brother. Okay. And he slunk out and slanked out and moped out of the room, realizing that his theft time was over. And I closed the door and I burst out laughing. I didn't even try to suppress the laugh. I laughed hysterically and I laughed as I stood at the door. I wanted his punk behind to hear the laugh and I made sure that he did. Yeah, that's right. And I could hear him close his door. I could actually hear the embarrassment as his door closed. For the rest of the time that he stayed in the building, he couldn't even look at me. But I could look at him. <laughs> Dude, you live right across from me. You don't think you're going to run into me? Trying to see. You can see when you walk, when you open up the door and you walk out and you see his door open up and then it closes really quickly because he doesn't want to run into you. <laughs> That's right. And then eventually he moved away. Probably moved someplace where he can steal food from somebody else's house with his punk behind. You food stealing piece of crap. But that's what it was. I gave him an inch. He tried to take a mile. I was trying to be cool to him. In fact, had he kept just taking sugar, I mean, eventually I would have shut him down. You know what I'm saying? Or at the finish, or I would have said, hey, I don't have it or anything like that. Just to get rid of him. Because it's not like he came into my apartment just to hang out. We weren't like that. But he shot himself in the foot, man. He shot himself in the foot by being greedy. And a lot of times people do that. Not just thieving, food-stealing neighbors. Big companies and banks, all of these people do the same things. We know that the big companies are ripping us off a little bit. We know that the banks are ripping us off a little bit. We know that there's a lot of people ripping us off a little bit. We know that. And we've resigned ourselves to the fact that we're going to get ripped off. But when they get greedy... When they get greedy, that's when we shut them down. That's when a politician winds up going to jail. That's when a bank gets fined billions of dollars. That's when a business gets fined. That's what happens when they get way too greedy. When we give them an inch and they take a mile. So I'm at the point right now where if I give you an inch, all you're getting is an inch. You're not going to get a mile. Because if you're a friend of mine, I'm going to give you a mile. My friends all can get a mile, but none of them will take the full mile. And that's one of the reasons why we we remain friends. And you, after all of the years that you're listening to me, I consider you a friend as well. I really, really do. So I'm going to ask for an inch from you. Not a mile, just an inch. If you like this podcast, and you do, do me a favor. Share a link to this podcast on your social media. You know, if I, if you see me on social media someplace pushing a link for this, re-exit or re-Facebook it or whatever the hell uh, social media you have. If you have not subscribed, and I'm sure most of you have, but if you're new and you like this podcast, please subscribe to this podcast or follow me on Spotify, okay? Spread the word. Tell your friends about this podcast. Tell family about this podcast. Threaten to disown your family and friends if they don't listen to this podcast. Um, Okay, that's a mile. That's too much. (laughs) I'll be happy with just an inch of spreading the word about the podcast and subscribing if you haven't. I would really, really appreciate that. I am back, my friend. Much love to you, and I will see you again next time. So remember... If you give an inch to somebody, make sure they just take an inch. If they're close enough to you where you're going to give them a mile, make sure they don't take 10 miles, okay? Okay? Much love to you. Take care.